Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you guys uh, what the Roblox particle system is and how to change everything in it and how to just what what everything means because I know at first seems very overwhelming with uh, all the particles and all just the settings and everything but I'm going to be trying to make it a bit more simple for you guys so you guys can learn how to make visual effects and everything so let me just spawn in a particle real quick so I'm going to spawn in a part and then you want to put it anywhere and personally I just like to resize it by a bit just to make it smaller so let me just make it real quick okay so once that is done let me just resize a bit more just so you guys can see what it is I'm gonna press plus, then search for particle emitter. Once you see that there, just click, and these little sparkles should be coming out of your block now. So, there's a bunch of settings. I know it's really uh, jarring at first just with everything here, but I'm gonna be explaining uh, what, you know, what everything is and how that affects your particles. So, I'm gonna start off with color. This should be self explanatory, just uh, what color the particle is. Like a little GUI will open up here, change it. You know, just the colors and everything. Uh, light emission means how much light is being emitted from your particles. So it's going to be brighter if, it, if there's more light emission. As you can see, there's a lot more bloom than if I put zero. Pretty big difference. Uh, for light influence, this is how the particle is influenced by light. So if you spawn in a, an attachment and add a light, let me just uh, increase the brightness. As you guys can see, the, the particles here are being influenced by the brightness, even though there's zero light emission. So if I change this to like a color like uh, yellow, it changes the particle color. So I don't really see use for this since I don't really mess with uh, light influence too much. But if you turn light, emits, uh, light influence down or just off completely, you guys get a new setting, which means which is brightness. So you can adjust how bright the particle is. So if you combine this with light emission, it makes for really bright effects. So yeah, just be... Uh, be wary of that. Let's go back to normal. So orientation means uh, uh, how the particle is facing the world camera. So if it's facing camera, that means the texture will always face the camera. If I go up here, the um, the, the the sparkles are always facing me. If I put it on facing world up, which means they're they're still, they're, they're still facing me. But if you go up, they're not going to be facing me up here because they're world up they'll be always uh, facing up for velocity parallel it's pretty similar except uh if you mess with the spread angle let me just do that real quick if you mess with the spread angle the particle will adjust to where it's going so if i look up you can still see it if you look here you still see it you just can you can kind of see where uh, it flattens out so very helpful um then there's velocity perpendicular, which makes the thing face up, always facing up. It's like the opposite of uh, facing camera world up. Don't take my word for it, I'm just making an example. But yeah. Uh, then we put this back on facing camera. So size, if I make this 10, you know, big, get zero, nothing. So if you want to properly adjust size, you can press these three dots here and a little GUI should open. So this part here means the start of the particle and this is the end. So if I put this up here, the particle will get big at the end, then it'll disappear. But if I put this big here, that means it'll disappear quicker. But if I put it like this, that means it'll get big here, then it'll go all the way up here, and it's get small here. Okay guys, so it's me from editing. Uh, I forgot to mention something when I was uh, explaining the, the, the size graph. So if you guys want to add more detail, let me just make, re re replicate what I did. So as you can see, it'll only, like the size will only go up to here. Let's make this, uh, oops, let me undo that. If you want to make that more detailed and have the particle have more variety, you can have, you can drag these two lines, which means this red, this like red bar, which mean this means that particles which are in in this size will like hard to explain, but like let me just uh, increase, let me just make it more visible. So as you can see, there's many different size particles now. There's like smaller ones, there's bigger ones. Make this down like this. There's only gonna be bigger ones. If I like put it like here, a lot more variety. It's gonna be really huge ones, really small ones. So yeah, this just adds more variety. This envelope means there's going to be particles from everything here, like all of these sizes here. The, the same applies to transparency and squash because these all have the similar settings. So yeah, just be wary of that. All right, back to the video. So yeah, that's very helpful. 
For squash, it's, the, it's pretty much the same GUI, you know, but it's just for how squash your texture is. I wouldn't really recommend uh, messing with this for now until you're a lot more uh, experienced since it's kind of confusing for uh, beginners, but yeah. For texture, this is what texture the particle is. Let me just find one real quick. I'm just gonna look for a random texture, like um, this thing, I guess. So if I, oh, wrong button. I click this, then copy asset ID, paste it right into here. The particle will emit these faces, so yeah. Then for transparency, it's the same graph except if I put the transparency up here, which means this it'll get, you know, you won't be able to see it when it's up there, but if I put it up here, then make it down here, you won't be able to see it here, but you'll be able to see it up here. So this is very helpful when you're making like smoke particles and stuff. Make, adds like a little uh, fade out, which makes the transition less jarring. So uh, yeah, let me just change that back to normal. Z offset is basically, let me just show you guys what it does. So if I put this, uh, if I may just resize this block up a bit, you're gonna see some particles, but not everything. So if I put uh, Z offset on one, you'll be able to see the particles inside the block. So if I put this on three or two or just anything higher, but see it more but personally i don't really go over three because if I, or just two because if i go closer the particles disappear which is very annoying at times but it's okay let's put this back down so now we're going to move on to emission ignore data because that doesn't really do anything it's kind of useless well from what i know if you're not scripting then it's just kind of useless i think even if you're scripting i don't even know what that does so yeah Emission direction means which uh, which which way it'll emit from. So if I put this uh, up here, then it's gonna go from the top of this cube. It'll go from front, left, right, bottom, you know, etc. You get the deal. Um, enabled means if the particle will be emitting or not. So if I put this on, off, on, off. So for lifetime, it uh, makes the particle last shorter. So if it's a shorter lifetime, it's only going to last this this much time. But if I put it on like 10, it'll go really up and it won't disappear. Don't get this mistaken with speed. This makes your particle last longer while speed makes your particle go faster. So let me just put this back to 0 0.5. So rate is how many particles or like the, the rate of particles. So if I put this down to a lower number, it'll be like... Only a few, it puts on to 100, you know, it'll be a lot more. And the max rate is 500. So if you guys, should, if you try to go any higher than that, it's going to give you no different results. So yeah. Also for lifetime, I forgot to mention, you can have multiple lifetimes. So there's like a minimum and maximum. So if you want a particle to have like more variety, put it on 0 0.85, which means some particles will stop at 0 0.5, while some others will stop at 0 0.85. This is good for creating a variety and making your particles look a bit better just with that, uh, with that added detail. So yeah. Um, then there's rotation, which let me get a texture to show you guys this. Yeah, I'll put this texture here. Uh, this random one. Let's put this texture here. It makes it a bit small so you guys can tell. Lower the speed a bit. As you guys can see, this texture is always going to be facing upwards, but if I make the rotation 90, it'll flip to its side. Put this uh, 180, it'll be upside down. Minus 90, it's on the left side, and then zero, you get the deal. So, rotation is based off, I mean, uh, rotation speed is based off of uh, uh, rotation. Also, you can have multiple rotation too. You can have like some at 50 degrees and some at 100 degrees. Makes more detail, of course. Let's say my particle is 100 degrees. Uh, yeah, that's good. Actually, let me get 180. So, that means if I put the rotation speed to 360, It'll start uh, at, uh, let me show you guys. It'll start normally, but then it'll rotate to adjust to the new rot to new rotation. So if I put this on like 100, it'll rotate slower or just start at, at, a, at a later point to reach 180. So yeah. Uh, speed is pretty self-explanatory. It just depends how fast the particle goes. So if I put this up to 100, it's going to go really fast. Put this to zero, it won't move at all. And a very helpful thing for uh, speed is if you're using velocity or any ones with uh, velocity in the name, if the speed is zero, it's not going to show up. But a quick way to bypass that is making it 0 0.001.
It'll still show up, but it won't move, which is very helpful for the velocity ones. And I see a lot of people getting confused with that, so yeah. Once again, you can have different speeds, so if I put this on 25, some will go at 25, and I'll put this at 1. Some will be slower, some will be faster. Just a good way to make variety, like I said before. Let's back up to 3. So spread angle is which angle the particle spreads at. So let me put this in attachment to make it easier to tell. So, where is the attachment? Oh, here it is. Step back to actually let me just reset this. Hold on, guys. Put this up here. If put this uh, 50 degrees, it'll spread at a 50 degree angle on on uh, is on the different axes. If put this at 100 degrees, it'll be 100 degrees angle. 360, 360 degrees angle, and yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Now emitter shape, I wouldn't recommend messing with these until you're a lot more experienced. I'll do a different video on that later, because right now. I don't even know. It's it's just a bit weird, but I'll show you guys anyways. I'll just do it now so you guys get that out of the way. So for emitter shapes, you're gonna have to make your uh, your part a bit bigger. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna use the Ross particle editor to make it easy to see. If it's a box like this, you know, just be normal like that. If I make this a if I go inwards, hold on. Go inwards, it'll go down, in and out, it'll go up and down. Then volume. Surface means it'll go at the top, while well, volume means it'll cover the entire part of the entire box. So, for cylinder, it creates like a cylinder, and the particles spread out as such. So, if I make it in, it goes inwards, out, outwards. Shape partial makes the shape of the uh, cylinder change. I don't know what effect this has on the particle, but I don't know. Change volume, surface, it doesn't really do anything for uh, the cylinder. Actually, this is a small difference, but it's kind of just not like it's not noticeable. Then for disc, it emits from the top only, inwards. Same thing. Actually, I'll put this on volume. Yeah, so it'll, it's pretty similar. But then spheres, sphere is the only really different one. If I make this bigger, the particles can go inwards. So let me go inwards. That means the particles only go in. And if I can make them go outwards, it'll go outwards. You know. Shape partial, I would really uh, recommend changing this for sphere since that kind of just ruins the effect. But if you guys want to, you guys can. Surface doesn't really change anything, just makes it go off from the surface. Inward, it makes it look better. And uh, yeah, that's it for emitter shape, but just go back to default. Okay, so now we have flip books. I wouldn't recommend messing with this for now because they're. Um, just wouldn't really recommend doing them till later, but I'll just show you guys them regardless. Yes, ju just so you guys know. Let me get the uh, particles. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a pre-existing uh, flipbook that I have from before. Let me just change this a bit. So as you guys can see, let me just make this a bit more uh, visible. Let me just array lower. So as you can see, the, the the texture is animated, which means it makes adds for a lot more detail. But this setting isn't public yet, so it won't be able to be used in games, which is really annoying, but it is what it is. So if I go down to flipbook settings, flipbook layout means, uh, uh, flipbooks have different layouts, so th the texture I'm using is twenty uh, is 4x4. If you 2x2, it's going to look weird, because that's not what the thing is built for, then 8x8 is it's not going to work, so yeah. Uh, one shot, well, let's go from loop. So loop is, um, it's, I, I couldn't tell you what this does. Um, I think it, like... The lifetime higher. Yeah, I honestly have no idea what loop does. It's I wouldn't recommend using loop. Um, then we have uh, one shot, which is the best way, which means the particle will always, um, you know, do the fucking flipbook thing. So let me just make this a bit higher so you guys can see. That means in the span of the lifetime, it'll do the full uh, animation, which is really good. So yeah. Then we have um, ping pong, which I I don't know, dude. <laughs> I really don't know. Then random, it just starts at random frames, which it works sometimes. But personally, I just like doing one shot since it makes the flipbook a lot more organized and animated. Looks way better. So yeah, that's it for flipbook settings. Let me just go back to normal. Okay. So then we have motion and acceleration. So if I this uh, makes the particle move on different axes. So if I make this move on the x-axis, make this 100, it'll move that way. If I do on the y-axis, it'll move up or down. 
also this isn't the same for everyone sometimes if i rotate it it'll be different so if i do this and i put locked apart the y-axis will be this way it's just a bit strange but yeah uh don't really mess with that that's what acceleration does just mess it's good to mess around with that if you're doing like um small edits just don't uh don't use that for speed, because using the actual speed thing then using combining that with acceleration is much better. So drag is a really, 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 really uh, good setting. N nobody really uses it. I don't know why it's really good. So as you guys can see, if the speed is 23, they all just fly off here. But if I add drag, it'll stay at there for a second, then it'll disappear. Which allows for the user to see the particle a lot more and just makes it a lot more um, easier to see. Just add, add more detail and everything. So. Uh, sorry if I'm bad at explaining some uh, things. I'm not really good at uh, talking about stuff that I know. I'm bad at teaching. So yeah. Locked apart means, so let's say that I just rotate this normally. The particles will follow with it. But if I do locked apart, the particles won't move. Like they'll still move, but they won't like uh, t uh, trail off. If you know what I mean. But yeah. Then we have time scale, which means like just makes the particle slower, like slow motion kind of. I don't really see the use in this setting. Maybe if you just want to get some really specific uh, timing, I don't know. And velocity inheritance, I genuinely don't know. I don't think this does anything. Yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, that's every setting. Ignore this. This is just from a setting, uh, a uh, plugin that I have. So before I move on, I'm I'm gonna show you guys some plugins that are very very helpful. So, as you guys can see, uh, you guys won't have edit particle or any of these things. So, the particles, I'll put them in, in the description of the video, but these are very, very helpful. So, with edit particle, uh, it, sh it like visualizes where the particle goes and it gives you more freedom for size. So, if I use the Roblox one, the max size in the graph is 10, which is very, very limiting. Because if you want to go bigger, it's not going to work. So, if I make this just back to 1. If I use this... I can make it, you know, infinite, I think. It's huge that it goes off the map. That's very useful. Also works with transparency, squash, and yeah. Um, this particle here, well, this setting, it, it uh, allows you to make the, the curves less linear. I wouldn't recommend messing with this for now because this is a bit more advanced. You guys should try and learn all the basics first, then move on to that. Then emit. It just emits a certain amount of particles. So if I emit 50... Boom, 50 of those come out. Pretty helpful. So, uh, yeah. That's every Roblox particle setting. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll do another video on how to make effects, but this is just explaining the basics. I'll do, like, a part tutorial. So, yeah. If you guys did think this video was helpful or if this did help you out, please like, uh, like subscribe, and comment. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of this because I want to help you guys... Uh, develop because I've, I've gotten a lot of questions on how I do this and you know, etc. So Yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye guys